A storm is coming. Mankind faces ruin and despair. The world is changing, yet hope remains in the hearts of the people. We go about our daily lives never knowing the forces that can change our destinies forever. We are oblivious, ignorant like sheep to the slaughter. This night, in the year of our Lord 1047, marks the beginning of our journey together. A journey into darkness, into madness. I watch him from the shadows. Is he the one? He has come far already, but he will be tested, tested to the very limits of human endurance and beyond. This night he rides looking for the old gods, armed with an amulet that has led him here. Tonight he will begin his journey into oblivion. I follow him into the old forest, watching him from afar. He is strong indeed. The one God comes to drive out the many, but here, in this place, God's influence is thin and threadbare. The old gods still hold sway here. Few venture this far into the wood. He is disturbed by dreams, dreams that gnaw at his very soul. He will rest for the night, but rest will not come easy. The battle has left him weakened. But he knows the dream will return, and though he fears nothing on this earth, yet his nightmares sap the strength within him and leave a cold grip on his heart. Tomorrow he will use the old hunting path. Long has it been in disuse, but for now he dreams. Alone again with only his thoughts as company, he continues on his journey to find the one he seeks. Who or what was that strange creature? There is a power here that few know, a power that could have some influence on events. Perhaps the guardian of the lake is aware of him now and offers aid in his quest. There is just the small matter of the dead bog to overcome, a place that has claimed the lives of many of the Brotherhood. The smell of death is strong here, and danger lies around every corner, but nothing will stop him, nothing will stand in his way. The stench of the bog fades into memory, and a land of great beauty lies before him, a paradise where nature lives in harmony with all living creatures, indeed a refuge for those who wish it. He is close now, close to the old gods and the old ways, long forgotten by men, this kingdom was once revered by all, yet now only a small part remains. Soon even this will disappear. The amulet senses its master. Its journey is almost over. He will need all his strength now, all his wits. If he is to succeed here, if he is to convince the old god to help him. The test has shaken him. I see the doubt in his eyes as he heads towards the lake. So Pan is helping him now. That's good. Perhaps it bodes well. I wonder if he knows what awaits him here, in this place where the dead can contact the living. It is cold now. A chill wind blows through his heart. I can see it, feel it. He will need help if he is to succeed. He must not fail. He will not fail, not now, not yet, not if I have anything to do with it. We part ways, he and I. My instincts tell me he is filled with hope, a hope that will drive him ever onwards. Good. Perhaps he is the one, a warrior of pure heart who can deliver us from all evil. Perhaps. I wonder what went through his mind when he saw her there, his beloved, did he see his dreams, or did he see his future blown away like leaves on the wind? I spy him as he heads out towards the reaches of Pan's influence. A forest lies to the east that leads to the land of the lichens. The ruin of an ancient civilization is there, forgotten and decaying. Once a proud testament to man's ingenuity and vision, it has now been conquered by nature as she claims all things for her own. 
He is becoming stronger with every step he takes. His prowess in battle is undeniable. He will need it now. Goblins are one thing, but there are other creatures in the dark places of the world, creatures who know nothing of his plight but fight for their very survival. Many fallen brothers are testament to this. Indeed, their bleached bones adorn the tortuous tunnels in this godforsaken place. He runs ever onward into peril. I wonder who the prey is, and who is the hunted. Perhaps when the time comes, these creatures will know fear as they look into the eye of their quarry. Go, my friend, save your love. So he has found another of Gandolfi's upgrades. This was unforeseen, though it should prove useful in the challenges to come. The lost city of Aghata looms before him. I wonder if you know what truly lies ahead for you, Gabriel, what God has in store for you, the land of the Lycans. This ruined city now belongs to their lord, and you can be sure he will not allow you to pass without forfeiture of your life. But in order to bring her back, you need to defeat him, my friend. You need to crush him into the dust, like the worm that he is. This ancient city occupies many layers, each one being the foundation for the next. It is a labyrinthine maze of dead ends and forgotten walkways. Danger lurks around every corner. He has shown great resilience, but this journey will take him longer than anticipated and deeper than any man has ever ventured in centuries. He will need all his wits to find an alternative route into the heart of the city where his destiny awaits him. Agharta was once one of the greatest cities of the ancient world, but it didn't take long to fall under the onslaught of the Dark Lord. The lichens were innumerable, and the city was razed to the ground. The necromantic wars, as they were known, destroyed the advanced technologies that the Agartians had closely guarded. Eventually the titans fell, and then the people were massacred one by one, or were turned into beasts subservient to their new conqueror. None now remain to tell the tale. Who is this strange girl? Surely she could not have survived alone in this hellhole? Gabriel follows her deep into the depths of the city. I wonder where she is leading him. It is strange. I hear no words, and yet it seems Gabriel is communicating with her in some way. Something tells me she has a part to play in all of this. Fate has played its hand, and now the die is set. I knew this child would play her part somehow, and it seems Gabriel has real help at last. It bodes well for our quest. The golem that protects the girl has something that could prove very useful in the end, something unforeseen. My dear friend, I see your destiny before me, and it is terrible indeed, and yet I have trust that all will be as I have hoped. The three companions enter the chamber of the Titans. What awaits them there is all that remains of the great technology of the Aghartians. This battle will test them all, and there is no going back now. The board is set, the pieces in play, and we shall see what occurs and who will emerge the victor. The child and her golem will help, and I hope once the battle is won that Gabriel will have the courage to do what is necessary, necessary for our quest to succeed. For there is still the matter of the Lords of Shadow, and their power is even more formidable. A great victory. Gabriel has won the trust of the girl, and together they wield a fearsome power. She is so young, so beautiful. Life is so fragile here on the edge of humanity. And yet in this unforgiving place she has managed to survive with the help of her Black Knight protector. Sleep will come and take them soon. Tired and exhausted, they rest but this night. Fate once again comes calling, and I fear my friend will never be the same again. Dreams are a gateway to the mind, and now Gabriel has paid a terrible price for succumbing to his weariness. 
the many sleepless nights since his love was taken from him, the fear of falling into sleep, the nightmares that haunt him have all played their part. Did he murder this poor girl, or is there some other explanation? Doubt gnaws at him now, eating his very soul. The golem protected this child for centuries, loved her dearly, and there was no way he would have let Gabriel live, yet alone give up the gauntlet. Few men could continue. Most would abandon the quest, but something deep inside forces him ever onwards. A dark force has taken hold, and all creatures of the night will come to fear him now. Gabriel has fought long and hard to get to this point, and now he faces his stiffest challenge. The Dark Lord of the Lycans must be defeated if Gabriel stands any chance of bringing his beloved back. I fear he will suffer more than he knows once he discovers the truth, and yet his hatred and burning desire for revenge cannot be underestimated. He has the gauntlet, and he has Gandolfi's weapon. He is a force that even the Dark Lord will struggle to deal with. Good. Soon he will overcome this evil. Soon the world will be free of the Lords of Shadow, and plans long dreamt of will come to fruition. Go, my friend, go and break this creature once and for all. The deed is done. Cornell is no more. Such a pity that the Brotherhood of Light, the order to which we both belong, should also be the reason why the world is in such chaos. Gabriel, you have proven your worth, my friend. You have a piece of the God Mask. It is said this relic can bring back the dead. It is said this relic can bestow power beyond any man's reckoning. Now, with the help of the old god, he heads toward the land of the vampires and further into the heart of darkness. It is a sad tale of the witch who guards this fortress, a sad tale of love lost, a tale not so dissimilar to our brave hero. Yet pity is not something he can feel any more. He is blind to it. The pity of these so-called evil creatures will be laid aside for revenge, and so goodbye, once beautiful Malfas. You will trouble mankind no more, and when you are gone into the void, know that love destroyed you in the end. So it seems Pan has saved Gabriel once more, his arrival most fortuitous. Gabriel now enters the outskirts of the vampire's territory, a cold winter has gripped this land for centuries, driving out the inhabitants to warmer climes. Those stubborn enough to stay have contended with the cold death that visits them each and every night, taking their loved ones away forever. The vampires thrive in the cold and terrorize the living who crave warmth and companionship. This night a warrior will come, a knight in shining armor with death at his side. He comes for you, creatures of the night. This village is one of the last vestiges of human civilization left in this place of death and cold. It lies not far from the vampire's castle, our next objective. I have some matters to attend to here, matters that could spoil our plans. I will deal with them and try to rendezvous with Gabriel later. He has not slept in days, not since the girl. The pain is etched on his face still, but in his soul only hatred drives him. We will not speak of it. He must not know I have seen everything, that I have followed him this far. We delve deep below the abbey, ready to face the evil confronting us. The abbot, Vincent Dorin, was once a good and kindly man who helped the people of Weigol. But now he has become a devious coward who has holed himself up in the abbey and rigged it with traps of cunning. The people, unprotected, have paid a heavy price for his treachery. Night has fallen outside, and we will be open to vampire attack at any time. We must be on our guard. We must work together if we are to succeed in acquiring the relic that the abbot guards. This will help us greatly in defeating the vampiric horde later. 
The traps laid by the abbot have proved tricky, and yet we have managed to break into the inner cloisters, and the library is close at hand, if memory serves. My friend looks weary and troubled, the weight of the world on his shoulders. I can see he is holding a terrible secret deep within. He is trying to bury it, and in its place the anger is taking over. We must not delay. We must find Dorin and take what we need before we are dragged down with the guilt. The need of the many outweighs those of the few now. We can shed no tears for those lost. We must be strong, and we must destroy the Lords of Shadow at any cost. The tower at the Abbey of Weigall was once a place where men of God sought knowledge and protected the people with Christ's love. Now it is the refuge of a man driven insane by fear. Dorin has abandoned his people to death or worse. A powerful relic keeps the vampires at bay, and we must take it if we stand any chance against the Dark Lord's minions. I know of a secret way that will take me to the top of the tower by a different path. Gabriel will have to find his own way for now. The power to defeat the vampires is now in our hands, and that bastard Dorin has no doubt met his maker. If anyone deserved death, it is he. No one will shed a tear for his miserable life. Countless others have met the same fate by his hand. The quest is going well. We have what we need to confront the Dark Lord, and I sense Gabriel's determination to see this through. The vampires must know we have the relic, and I am sure they will move to stop us if they can. Weigall village is safe, for now. The vampires have lost one of their commanders, Brauna, and news will travel back to the Dark Lord quickly. This is a blow, but it won't take long for them to regroup. Luckily, one of the villagers has revealed to us a secret path into the demon's castle— this will lead Gabriel into the sewers, and then up into the very jaws of death. The villagers called him God's Saviour, and his weapon they called Vampire Killer. Ah, Gandolfi, how that would make you smile. As for me, once my business here is done, I shall follow my friend and aid him where I can. Despite his best efforts to try entering the castle unnoticed, the vampires know that Gabriel is coming. Night is fast approaching, and soon he will have to use all his wits and powers to defeat what nightmares inhabit this place of death and decay. His strength grows by the day, and yet his hate intensifies deep within. He eats little and sleeps less. She is there in his thoughts, his beloved Marie. He knows that his journey is far from over. This castle, I fear, will push him into the abyss from which there is no escape. It seems getting into the castle will be more difficult than first thought. Gabriel will have to navigate the maze gardens. In this place a man can be lost forever, or devoured by the creatures that haunt its labyrinthine corridors. These gardens were once the most beautiful in all Europe, and many pilgrims would visit the castle grounds from lands far away to witness their timeless beauty. Now they lie wasted and rotten, decaying as their master lives on. Time is running out. Night is almost upon us. Soon the castle will be swarming with vampires. Those who are the most powerful of their kind are able to take on the appearance of high-born humans. Gabriel must be on his guard now, for appearances can be deceptive. I have heard that in this place one may face one's deadliest foes without realizing it until it is too late. She has the body of an innocent child, yet the wits and cunning of a seasoned predator. She will kill Gabriel in a heartbeat if she could. Beautiful Laura, who was turned many centuries ago, has lived a lonely, cruel existence ever since. Gabriel will have to be very careful from now on, as he can be sure that her mother, the one who commands here, is now fully aware of his presence and that Laura herself still has some part to play in our tale. The butcher who commanded the castle kitchens fed the corpses of the dead to the ghouls. 
The efficiency of the Queen's household is formidable indeed. The vampires drain the blood, and the ghouls feed on the remains. Nothing is left. Using his powers is making Gabriel far stronger than I anticipated. He will need more than physical prowess when he faces her. She can put a glamour upon his heart that will tempt him to forget everything he knows, even his beloved. She holds the next piece of the mask, and I fear that he will fall at the last. This part of the castle was once where a claimed scientist, Friedrich von Frankenstein, conducted his experiments into artificial life. He was quite mad, and often would conduct horrific and depraved acts, trying to discover the secrets of life itself. His own demise was equally gruesome. The vampire queen took him but kept him alive thus over many centuries. She fed on him daily, keeping him at the brink of death, yet living and aware. Why she did this is only known to a few. She once loved life and loved living things, and before she became a Lord of Shadow, she vowed she would punish Frankenstein for his vile acts. As a Dark Lord, she was able to keep her word. Gabriel has finally defeated Frankenstein's abomination. This hellish place is enough to thwart any man's resolve, and yet Gabriel seems completely willing to continue to the bitter end. I hardly recognize my old friend now. A steely resolve has taken hold, and compassion is now gone from his heart. He doesn't sleep these days, more's the pity. He just rages at the world and those creatures that dare to confront him. This next challenge will tax his mind further, and I fear it may break it forever. Curious, isn't it? Love can be a powerful weapon, it seems, even to those who are dead. Laura has spared him. Though she has the power to take his life, she has given it back, and all for love. Perhaps she remembers her true mother's arms around her, comforting her before she became this creature. Perhaps she remembers the feelings of love thought long lost to her heart all those years ago. A child's love is without bitterness or boundaries a pure love. I wonder what will become of her, this lost soul, when we kill her present mother and send her to the pits of hell where she belongs. The vampire's mercy is playing on his thoughts. I see that clearly on his face. Perhaps Laura reminded him of poor Claudia. Seeing his beloved Marie again has brought it all back to him. Marie's love is all he has now, and the hope of holding her again, the only hope. He is close now, close to the bitch who commands these vampire vermin. Gabriel will make her pay for the injustices he has felt at her hands. She is powerful. She will try every trick in the book to tempt him to her cause. There is just the small matter of the clockwork tower to overcome first. Another mad invention of Frankenstein that I hope will only delay his sweet revenge. The giant mechanisms and gears continue to turn, but Gabriel continues to foil them. He is now in the heart of evil. Darkness is all around, surrounding him from all sides. Here he will meet the brother of the one he destroyed in the village. His name is Olrox. The two brothers have been her greatest champions, Yet I sense their reign of evil is ending here tonight. Ulrox and his brother Brauner are traitors who took sides with the Queen when she became one of the Dark Lords. He has wreaked terror on the lands ever since. But now he will meet one who is greater, more powerful than he, one who will deliver a message without any mercy. Ulrox, meet Gabriel Belmont and his vampire killer. The blood of Ulrox has opened the way to the Queen. She holds the next piece of the God Mask which Gabriel must acquire if he is to be with his beloved again. She will try to seduce him, to glamour him, but he will see through her mask, I'm sure of it. He is so very strong now, and even she must fear her own death at his hands. 
I can smell her fear, her stench. Vampires can sense the living, but the dead she cannot. She knows Gabriel is here, yet she cannot sense death close at hand also. She knows what it is he wants. Poor, beautiful Carmilla, you will cry bloody tears before this night has ended. So Pan comes again with words of wisdom and advice for our hero. Gabriel is angry now. Carmilla's betrayal has made him question his own faith. The Brotherhood means nothing to him any more. He only wants his Marie back. He now has two pieces of the mask and only one more to find to make it complete. He must travel now to the land of the dead and he must face the final lord, death himself. There are still many leagues to travel and I cannot risk being seen for I doubt even one of his Brotherhood could help him now. He must go where none may follow, into the abyss. The stench of death is strong. A witch holds power here, but I sense Gabriel is more than a match for her. The bones of his fellow warriors litter the place, but he seems oblivious to them. Stoic and determined to move forward, he doggedly fights on. He has not slept for days, he rests only briefly. I sometimes hear him talking to her, telling her he loves her, that they will be together again. In the dark, he weeps for her, or perhaps it is for his own lost soul. The old hag has cast a spell on Gabriel, making him very small, small enough to enter the music box and retrieve the blue rose she so obviously desires. This old witch has me nervous. Something she said has filled me with disquiet. She mentioned the King of the Angels. I am sure I heard her correctly. What does this mean? Why do I have this feeling of dread? I hope Gabriel will succeed and quickly so that we may be on our way. When he has gone, I will kill this evil crow so that she may not be a danger to anyone else ever again. Baba Yaga sent our hero to the Titan's graveyard, and I have sent her soul to the underworld. She will trouble us no more. Now my friend enters the land of the dead, and his final battle is coming. I must find my own path and try to meet with him at some point, for now he is on his own. The land requires sacrifice. Sacrifice I hope that he can make, because without it he will not get very far. I must have faith in him now. The seed was sown long ago, and it flowers beautifully. He has come this far down the path. I must believe that he will go all the way. Powerful necromancers have used this once sacred ground to build an army of the dead. Conquering nearby lands, legions of zombies have devoured the living and given rise to this desolation. No man has traveled here without meeting death. Gabriel now faces his toughest challenge. He now bangs his fists on the very doors of hell on earth, and the Lord who commands here is listening, waiting for him, smiling. So the old god is dead. It has come to this at last. The blood of a god has opened the way. Good, Gabriel, very good. There is only one true God, and all usurpers must be cast aside, though Pan's sacrifice was not in vain. Now our warrior of light can proceed to his final destiny. The Lord of the Dead is the most powerful of the Lords of Shadow. Gabriel will need every ounce of his being to defeat him. I worry for him, though. His mind is tired, broken even. He questions his faith, he questions his heart. Can he succeed? Come, my friend, just a bit further, and you shall see your Marie again. Fueled by the very flames of hell itself, the crematory oven is where the gravedigger does his ghastly work. A powerful demon, whose mighty shovel can cleave a man in two with one stroke, the gravedigger will rip the very soul from Gabriel, given half the chance. Yet I sense that our hero is more than a match for this creature. 
This could be interesting indeed. I sense Gabriel's rage welling up within him, and I wonder who is the more terrible, our hero or the demon. And so it begins. The necromancer's abyss lies at his feet. He is dark and terrible, and the cries of the dead follow him wherever he goes. There is nothing but hate in his heart. Hate for those who have taken his beloved, who have made him do terrible things, who have taken his humanity. Now reap the whirlwind, scions of death, for comes the prince of darkness. Look at him, so dark, so beautiful. He has come for his revenge, and he shall have it. A killing machine without remorse, without pity. What has happened to you, Gabriel? What have you become? Love has blinded you, but you have changed, my friend. Your quest is almost over. The dream is in sight. Now you must face death, and you must defeat it. The mask is a powerful device, and he who wields it can do anything. Bring back the dead, rule the world, destroy the universe, challenge God himself. You are the one, Gabriel, you are the one. And now the final battle is come. Marie is waiting for you, my friend. She knows what you have done. She knows everything. Marie has hoped all this time that you would save the world, and here you are on the brink of it. You stand upon a knife edge. She has kept faith in you despite everything. Now you must fulfill your destiny, and the truth will out. I will help you, old friend. I will be with you in this, your moment of victory.